Okay, now we are given a couple of clues and we need to find the equation of the parabola based upon this. I'm going to begin by drawing a quick sketch. The directrix is x equals 0. That is the y-axis here. And I see that at negative 4 comma 5 I'm going to have the focus. By definition, the vertex is going to be halfway between the focus and the directrix. And since the taco shell wraps around the bean, we know this is going to open to the left-hand side. So it's going to open left. That tells us we're going to be using y minus k quantity squared equals the 4p times x minus h formula. We know by just finding halfway between negative 4 and 0 that the vertex will have an x-coordinate of negative 2. Therefore, the vertex will be located at negative 2 comma 5. And since it is two units from vertex to focus or vertex to directrix, p is going to equal negative 2. I need to put it negative there because this is opening to the left. Substituting both of those into the equation, we get the following as our equation. We get y minus 5 quantity squared equals negative 8 times x plus 2. In this next problem, we are given the vertex at 1 comma 3 and told that the, pa the curve passes through the point 3, 5. However, we're told that there are two possible answers. Note that the curve could either pass upward, like this, or it can open to the right, like this. So there are two possible cases. In either case, we know that our vertex, or h comma k, is the vertex 1 comma 3. Now, let's break this into two cases. Case number 1 is where this curve opens up. Now, in that case, it is not a function, and therefore x is squared, and we have x minus h squared is equal to 4p times y minus k. And we can begin by substituting in the values for h and k, and write, instead of x minus h squared, x minus 1 squared is equal to 4p times y minus k, which becomes y minus 3. But we don't know what the value of p is. That's where this other point, 3 comma 5, comes in. That point is on the curve, therefore it satisfies the equation of the curve and can be substituted in for x and y. When you do that, you have 3 minus 1 squared equals 4p times 5 minus 3, which is an equation that can be solved for p. So on the left, we have 2 squared, which is 4, equals 4p times 5 minus 3, which is 2. And dividing the 8 off of the right-hand side, we get the left side is 1 half. So substituting that back into the equation we have up above, this equation becomes x minus 1 squared equals 4 times a half. That's 4 times, not 4 times a half, is 2 times y minus 3. So that there is one possible parabola that can go through that vertex and through that point. Now we're going to move into case number 2. In case number 2, this curve is going to open to the right. And that will not be a function, therefore y is a squared. And we have y minus k squared is equal to 4p times x minus h. And again, we can substitute in the vertex for h and k. And that gives us y minus 3 squared is equal to 4p times x minus 1. And just as we did in that first case, we can substitute in the point 
3 comma 5, and that will give us 5 minus 3 squared is equal to 4p times 3 minus 1. The left side of this equation becomes 2 squared, which is 4. The right side is 4 times p times 2. And again, p is going to equal 1 half. So when we have the curve opening to the right, the equation becomes y minus 3 quantity squared equals 4 times 1 half, which is 2, times the quantity x minus 1.